And welcome to another edition of the ETBU Coaches Show. This is an inaugural show with head coach Farah Dunaway, the head acrobatic and tumbling coach here at ETBU. Coach, welcome to your first show. So excited. <laughs> Thanks for being with us, Farah. Uh, this is the first year for acrobatics and tumbling at ETBU, and uh, it was announced in June 2017. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the excitement of the sport overall and bringing it to ETBU for this year? Well, the biggest draw for me to coach this sport was that it gave women athletes another opportunity to compete at the collegiate level. Um, having coached cheer at that time for about 17, 16 years, um, I had worked with that area of athletes. Um, and in that time, there are several athletes that are coming through the high school level and wanting to compete um, in college, but they just didn't have the collegiate look or, or they couldn't find a good um, a fit for them to compete in, the, with, in cheer. Um, and, you know, having been a collegiate soccer player myself, I loved the fact that I could take any size, shape of female athlete and just and, and, and build something great with them. Um, as I started to research more the sport of acrobatics and tumbling, it was great to see that it's not just one area of discipline that these athletes are coming from. It, they're coming from artistic gymnastics. They're coming from artistic acrobatics. They're coming from powerlifting. Um, I've got some, uh, one that's a basketball player, um, one that comes from softball, a couple that come from the, the world of cheer. So to me, it's just a celebration of just female athletes in general coming together and just making something really glorious with this, this new discipline. So with that, uh, you've built your team for our first meet coming up. Talk about some of the uh, team bonding and building that you've done this year through the fall and spring to bring the team together. Well, one of the things that um, I've had the opportunity to do over the years of coaching is really just develop um, just team building practices, I guess. Um, with that being said, this year is the first year that we did this forum, which was really great. We, I did it with my cheer program as well as with my acrobatics and um, tumbling program. But um, there's a place in um, Diana called Thomas Falls. And what we did there was we did a 2K mud run with water obstacles. So each team had to split up into a sub team. So the acrobatics and tumbling team had to divide it up into the blue gold and or blue team and a gold team. They had two objectives. Number one, they had to compete. So blue had to compete against the gold. Um, they had to fight for a win. The second objective was they couldn't leave any team member behind. So throughout the course of this, they were faced with um, challenges of heights, challenges of endurance, challenges of um, problem solving, how do I get from point A to point B, despite the, the emotional obstacle I may be facing at the time. And um, the obstacle took about 45 minutes to an hour to complete, and it was really fun to watch because so many of the girls that you would just think are these immense, fearless athletes on the mat or on the beam or you know on the basketball court or whatever, they're getting to this mud run water obstacle and they're genuinely having a hard time getting up a slippy slide. So for them having to bond and work together and, and, and face fears or face um, something like, I have one girl that is just, just hates being dirty. And she literally had to uh, bear crawl in mud, in thick mud under a net. Um, and so just watching them go through that was kind of nice for me as a mom and as a coach because those kinds of challenges, those kinds of obstacles throughout the year when they face obstacles or challenges in our sport, I can refer back to that team building experience of, hey, remember when you couldn't get over that mountain by yourself and your teammates had to come and help you over? Or remember that time where you felt like you had nothing left to give as you were climbing up the, you know, slippery slide A-frame and had to slide down 10 foot, you know, 10 feet into water. Remember when you were scared or remember when you didn't think you had anything left to finish that. We refer to that and that just it's a shared experience, a shared challenge that they all were able to together overcome. I don't know if anybody could have overcome that course by themselves. So it was really great to be able to see 
them fight through it and then feel the sweetness of victory when it was over. Um, and that's just one example of the things that we just continuously, that's a bigger example, but one that we just continuously do um, within our program because I don't feel like, especially with acrobatics and tumbling, you can't step on each other every day, catch each other every day, and lay your life on the line for your teammate every day unless you have that bond, unless you have that unity and that genuine love for each other in that sport. Why don't we quickly talk a little bit about what acrobatics and tumbling is, kind of describe what it is where it's not just uh, gymnastics and cheer. It's, it's an all-out physical sport for these females to do in college. And, and it's grinding on the body. It's right. fun to watch with the music and, and the team togetherness. Tell, tell us a little bit about uh, acrobatics and tumbling. So the sport itself, um, I may not be the best one to um, really explain this, but in my one-year experience here, um, to anyone else, they would look like um, power lifters in volleyball uniforms, um, some of the techniques and some of the things that they do could be um, linked back to maybe a, a, the sport of cheer origin. Um, we're scored with USA Gymnastics, so most of everything we do is rooted in gymnastics. Um, now, granted, or acrobatics, um, granted, some of the elements that we do, like gymnast, gymnasts don't do um, tick-ups or um like liberties and things like that. That would be more of a, a, a cheer thing. But um, just the amount of, of force, the impact on their bodies as athletes, um, the acrobatics and tumbling sport uses a dead floor, So, which means that it's just the mats on the gym floor. In artistic gymnastics and in cheer, sport, uh, the all-star cheer, whatever, um, they're, the athletes are tumbling and they're building on a spring floor. So there's a lot less impact in their sport, usually because before they come to acrobatics and tumbling. So usually when an athlete comes in as a freshman, they're having to not only train their body um, in new techniques regarding their discipline, but they're having to train their body on a dead floor. Um, so it's really like learning the things that they have become experts in all over again. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things that has helped me is my experience in coaching cheer because um, I've always been a very stunt-oriented or building-oriented coach. Um, with that being said, everything is still different. The techniques are different. Um, the terminology is way different. Um, the only thing that remains the same is the biomechanics of the way that your body is built and the way that um, an athlete works with building on top of each other and, you know, Laws of gravity, obviously, but um, but everything is is new. Um, so if someone comes in from the cheer background or from artistic um, acrobatics, they're still having they're taking their previous knowledge, but they're still having to morph it into what the, the grandness of this sport is. And and it is very grueling because you can't. It's not something that you just do one time and you're like, oh, okay, I've got that. There, I mean, the girls every day have um, you know blood blisters from shoes grinding on their necks or bruises. Um, you know, we do what we can to, to just um, eliminate that impact if we can and, and definitely take off some of, um, some of the grinding if we can. It definitely helps to have a larger roster because the girls don't have to do as much. But in this first year program, having um, a smaller roster compared to the, the larger schools that would have maybe 30 or 40, um, the girls have to take on more roles than, than they would if there's a, a, a bigger team. But um, what's been really cool to watch is it, even despite those blisters and even despite those bruises and the sore muscles and the I'm going in for therapy every day just so I can make it through, you know, practice, um, their hearts and their spirits have been so great about it. They, these girls are hungry to compete and they're hungry to be able to show what they've learned in this last year, no matter how great they were leading into this sport. And, and with that, the learning aspect, we will be able to learn from one of the, well, probably the best program Absolutely. Uh, as we host Baylor in our first ever home meet on Saturday. Talk about the excitement of, of bringing in 
the national champions to our home floor and to compete against them in the first first meet ever, <laughs> which uh, will be fun to watch because they are the elite of A and T. They are. They are. Um, you know, the head coach of Baylor University is Felicia Mulkey, and she's actually um, one of the pioneers, if not the pioneer, of the sport. And um, it's because of her that we have A and T here at ETBU. Um, she has taken, she and her staff have taken me under their wings and really just helped mold me um, and guide me into this whole foundational process here at ETBU. Um, they're fun to watch. They just, you know, everything about them is so elite that it's just, it's just fun. It's fun to watch their discipline. It's fun to watch their focus. It's fun to watch, obviously, their execution because it's seemingly unparalleled. Um, there are other great programs in the NCATA as well, um, but just I'm a little I'm a little partial. Um, Oregon and HPU have been um, very helpful as well in, in building this, but but having Baylor here on campus. My program aside will be just really great for the sport and for people to see how cool it really is and how intense it really is and how um, disciplined the sport really is. Um, one thing that I, in the process, have learned from Coach Felicia Mulkey is to teach and coach my athletes to have a faceless opponent. And so one thing that I've tried to do is not have them look at Baylor as a David and Goliath situation, but to look at a David and Goliath situation as if they have the Lord behind them and Goliath is only Goliath. So um, with that being said, I want my girls to be able to compete against Baylor as they would anybody else because their focus is execution and their focus um, needs to be, you know, just mental toughness, execution, um, synchronization, just the discipline of what they've been trained to do and not worry about who they're competing against. Um, and I'm really excited to watch that happen. Yeah, it was it was really neat last year when I went down and just observed and what they've done down there. And I had no idea what the sport was until <laughs> I went down there. And after watching it, it's going to be very exciting to have it here. Yep. So... Coach, thanks for talking to us here on, on your first coaches show. We're looking forward to more as we grow the sport and have awesome. you back as we uh, uh, continue on with the season. Thanks for watching, everybody, and uh, come out on Saturday to uh, Ornellis Gymnasium for our first ever acrobatics and tumbling home meet.